Today we shall learn about details of the first step in urine formation that is glomerular filtration rate which is abbreviated as GFR. Urine formation involves two stages. First is glomerular stage where plasma is filtered by glomerular membrane and hence called as glomerular filtration. The second stage is tubular stage where this filtrate is processed in various segments of tubules to form urine. As the filtrate moves through the various segments of the tubules, important constituents are reabsorbed back into the blood. This process is known as reabsorption and it plays important role in urine formation. Certain substances which need to be removed in larger quantities are secreted into the renal tubules from peritubular capillaries. Secretion mainly determines the amount of hydrogen, potassium and other substances to be excreted in the urine. All these processes are regulated as per the demand of the body. After entire processing of the filtrate, filtrate is converted into urine in the last segment of the nephron and then it enters the renal pelvis for excretion. In today's session, we shall learn the details about the first step in urine formation that is GFR. But before we proceed, this is Pratima from Planet Physiology. Glomerular filtration rate is defined as volume of plasma filtered by all the nephrons of both the kidneys per minute. Its normal value is 125 ml per minute or 180 liters per day. If you remember, the plasma volume is just 3 liters but GFR is 180 liters per day. It means the entire plasma is filtered and processed for about 60 times in a day. This allows rapid and precise regulation of volume and composition of body fluids. The fraction of renal plasma that becomes glomerular filtrate is called as filtration fraction. We have studied in renal circulation that normal renal blood flow is 1200 ml per minute. Hence, renal plasma is 650 ml per minute, plasma being 55% of the blood. Out of this, 125 ml of the plasma gets filtered in a minute and hence filtration fraction becomes 19%. Let us study the structure and features of filtration membrane which is also known as glomerular membrane or filtration barrier. The first layer is glomerular capillary endothelium. As shown in this diagram, it is highly fenestrated with pore size of 50 to 100 nanometers. Unlike other fenestrated capillaries, these pores are not spanned by diaphragm. Endothelial cells also possess negative charges. So, even though pores are large enough to allow filtration of plasma proteins like albumin, negative charge repels them and prevent filtration of plasma proteins. The next layer in the barrier is basement membrane of endothelial cells. It is gel-like matrix mainly consists of laminins, type 4 collagen and other proteoglycan filaments. It also has large spaces between them and has strong negative charge. So they also prevent filtration of plasma proteins. The last layer of the barrier is epithelial cells of the Bowman's capsule that is podocytes. As studied in the introductory video of renal system, podocytes have finger-like projections which wrap around the capillaries and the gaps between them form slit pores. The slit pores also possess negative charge. With this basic understanding about the filtration membrane, let's understand the factors that determine GFR. These are also called as factors which govern the GFR. First is the filtration coefficient which is the product of permeability and the surface area of the filtration membrane. It is abbreviated as KF. 
Second factor determining GFR is hydrostatic and colloid osmotic pressure gradient across the glomerular membrane. These factors are collectively written as Kf multiplied by hydrostatic pressure gradient minus oncotic pressure gradient across the filtration membrane, where Kf is filtration coefficient, Pgc is hydrostatic pressure in the glomerular capillaries, Pb is hydrostatic pressure in the Bowman space, Pi GC is oncotic pressure in the glomerular capillaries and Pi B is oncotic pressure in Bowman space. The same relationship is also written as GFR is equal to Kf multiplied by net filtration pressure. Since Kf cannot be measured directly, it is calculated by dividing GFR by net filtration pressure. Let us throw some light on details of these determinants. First is permeability of glomerular membrane. It depends on molecular size and a charge on the surface. Membrane is freely permeable for neutral molecules up to diameter of 4 nanometers. Above 4 nanometers, permeability of the glomerular membrane progressively decreases and the membrane is not at all permeable to substances with diameter above 8 nanometers. The same is shown in the graphical format. So till 4 nanometer substance is freely permeable, permeability reduces gradually and then above 8 nanometers substance is not at all permeable. Glomerular membrane is negatively charged and hence it repels substances with negative charge that is anions as indicated by this golden color line. This is the reason why albumin is not filtered in spite of its smaller diameter. In contrast, membrane favors filtration of cations as shown by red curve. Thus, porous nature of the filtration membrane allows rapid filtration of plasma and negative charge on it prevents filtration of plasma protein at the same time. Hence, it acts as a selectively permeable barrier. In case of acute glomerulonephritis, basal lamina of endothelial cells loses its negative charge and hence albumin gets filtered and excreted in urine. Presence of albumin in urine is called as albuminuria or proteinuria. Second factor that determines filtration coefficient is surface area available for the filtration. It is regulated by the mesangial cells. Contraction of mesangial cells reduces the area available for the filtration and hence decreases GFR. Various factors like endothelins, angiotensin II, vasopressin, norepinephrine, platelet activating factor and platelet derived growth factor cause contraction of mesangial cells and hence reduce the surface area and hence the GFR. Whereas Atrial natriuretic peptide, dopamine, prostaglandin E2 and cyclic AMP cause relaxation of mesangial cells and hence increases the surface area for filtration and hence the GFR. The next factor that determines GFR is hydrostatic and oncotic pressure gradient across the glomerular capillaries. Shown here is the afferent arteriole, the glomerular capillaries and efferent arteriole. This is the Bowman space surrounding the glomerulus. Now let us start with the hydrostatic pressure gradient. Hydrostatic pressure is the force acting on the capillary wall and it tends to move the fluid on the other side of the capillary wall. It is designated as P. Here I have used values as mentioned in Guyton. These are the extrapolated values for humans from animal studies. In Ganong, you will find different values. Those are the values in rat. In glomerular capillaries, hydrostatic pressure is 60 millimeters of mercury. This pressure is very high when compared with systemic capillaries because afferent arterioles are short and straight branches of interlobular arteries. 
Also, the diameter of efferent arterioles is smaller than that of afferent arterioles. Hence, they offer more resistance to the outflow of the blood from the glomeruli. So, because of these two factors, glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure is high. It forces plasma into the Bowman space. That means it favors filtration. Bowman space that surrounds the glomerular capillaries exerts hydrostatic pressure of 18 millimeters of mercury on the capillary wall. This pressure is also high due to tight fibrous capsule around the kidney. It moves fluid into the capillaries. Since hydrostatic pressure of the glomerular capillaries is greater than the Bowman space, gradient is in favor of filtration. Now let us study the colloid osmotic pressure or oncotic pressure. It attracts fluid from the other compartment. As proteins are not filtered, for practical purposes, colloid osmotic pressure in Bowman space is considered as 0 mm of mercury, whereas plasma colloid osmotic pressure is 32 mm of mercury. Now, this value is also high compared to the systemic capillaries because as plasma is filtered, plasma proteins get concentrated in the glomerular capillaries and hence their osmotic pressure rises. This pressure attracts fluid from the Bowman space into the capillaries or in other words, it prevents glomerular filtration. Thus, filtration process is favored by glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure and opposed by Bowman space hydrostatic pressure and plasma colloid osmotic pressure. The net pressure favoring the filtration becomes 10 mm of mercury. Under normal circumstances, alterations in the glomerular membrane permeability are minimum and hence KF is mainly due to changes in the surface area. But the main regulator of GFR is pressure gradient across the glomerular capillaries. Now let us study the factors affecting GFR or variations in GFR. These are very easy if you have a clear understanding of determinants of GFR. Any factor that alters these determinants lead to changes in GFR. First is the renal blood flow. Increase in renal blood flow increases GFR. It may be due to increase in blood volume or due to increase in systemic blood pressure. Increase in systemic arterial pressure increases glomerular capillary hydrostatic pressure and hence the GFR. In contrast, increase in Bowman's capsular hydrostatic pressure decreases GFR. This occurs in case of obstruction in ureter as seen in renal stone. Any reduction in oncotic pressure increases GFR and this is seen in hypoproteinemia of any cause, say protein energy malnutrition or liver diseases. High protein diet increases GFR and this is due to excess filtration of amino acids that leads to increase in sodium amino acid reabsorption from proximal convoluted tubule resulting into decrease amount of sodium reaching to JG apparatus. This initiates tubuloglomerular feedback mechanism to increase GFR. We shall study details of this reflex in regulation of GFR. Next, any factor that causes contraction of mesangial cells decreases surface area available for filtration and hence the GFR. In case of chronic glomerulonephritis, uncontrolled hypertension and diabetes mellitus, thickness of the glomerular membrane increases and hence GFR decreases. Apart from these factors, GFR decreases with advancing age and females have about 10% less GFR than that of male. So till now we have studied definition and normal values of GFR, structure of filtration membrane, determinants of GFR and factors affecting GFR. In the next video, we shall study regulation of GFR and its measurement. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. If you enjoy my presentations, 
press the like button and share it with your friends for more such videos subscribe my channel and click the bell icon thank you for watching and see you in the next video